Hi guys, today I'm going to share five lighting tricks that every blender artist needs to know. We're going to cover gobos, animating lights, adding light rays, coloring HDRIs, and loads more tips, including constraints and drivers. Let's get started. Light rays or sunbeams are used all over the place in computer graphics and movies. They add atmosphere to everything from logo animations to night scenes. They're really easy to make in Blender, consisting of just a light source and a volume fog cube. Let's take a look. Press A to select everything, X to delete everything. We're going to start by adding some text. Let's tab into edit mode. Let's type in something different. Drama. Click over here to change your font. Let's just choose, choose Rockwell. Right, press R to rotate, X to rotate on the X axis and then type 90. Uh, and if you want to, you can also give this some depth by clicking on the geometry tab and just extruding it a little bit. Right, now we're gonna add in a light. Shift A, light. We're gonna add a spotlight. Rotate X, 90. Rotate Z, 180. Press seven on your number pad for top view and just move the light behind the words. Right, now we can also add some fog. Shift A to add in a mesh. It's gonna be a cube. We're just gonna press S to scale this so it covers the whole scene. Uh, if you don't wanna see that, you can actually go to your object properties. Just go to your visibility and where it says viewport display, just say bounds, show bounds, and then display as wire. And then you can see and still select everything behind. Right, we're gonna give this a material of fog. So give it a new material, and we'll call it fog. Uh, instead of the surface, let's just remove the surface and add some volume. Just look for a principled volume node. Uh, let's go into rendered view. Uh, in fact, let's just increase the brightness of this quite a lot. And decrease the density of this quite a lot. And let's add in a camera. And let's just reset, press N to bring out your position things. So set that to 90 on the X. Reset those two, and we're just gonna bring it back on the Y axis. Press zero to go into your viewport mode. Uh, let's just tweak the position a little bit more. And now we can easily animate this light. Let's move this light to the left. Rub it on the X axis. We'll set a location keyframe there. Let's go to a frame 100. Grab Y, or sorry, grab X. Move it over there, I for another location keyframe, and now we get this cool, dramatic view. Let's just move the camera up a little bit. We get this super dramatic effect. Let's just tune this a little bit more, take the world settings back to zero, and maybe increase the power of the spotlight even more. Let's try 2000 watts. A gobo is a shape we put in front of a light source to create a shadow over what we're filming. They're great for creating a sense of place in our render. Let's see how we can use this in a product render. Okay, we'll start with a fairly unremarkable scene. We've got basically a plain curved backdrop and a bottle of perfume. Through the camera, it looks just like this, not very exciting. So at the minute, this scene's totally dark. We're gonna add some lights. So first I'm gonna add an area light. I'm just gonna put this above the bottle of perfume, scale it up a bit, and this is basically going to light the bottle. Let's just change that to 500 watts. Quite simple, but already quite effective. Now we're also gonna add a spotlight, and this is where we add our gobos. So let's add in a spotlight. I'm just gonna grab it, um, let's just move it along the, let's move it along the X axis, so it's behind the camera. 
move it up on the Z. A nice little tip, instead of having to try and rotate your spotlight to get it to point in the right direction, you can use a constraint. So if you go to your constraints over here, and we're going to add a track to constraint, and the target is going to be the bottle. And you'll see that the spotlight now exactly points to the bottle, and if we grab that spotlight and move it around, it'll remain pointed at the bottle wherever it is. Okay, great. So I'm just going to increase the brightness of this spotlight. And we will also just blend the cone of light so we've got a nice smooth gradient between the inside and the outside of the light. Now already it's looking a lot better with some nice lighting. Um, the next thing we're going to do is add a gobo, which is basically going to be a shape that makes a shadow in the background to add some atmosphere to the, to the scene. Hop into Google, I'm going to type in fern, uh, click on images, and if you go to tools here and set the color to transparent, we'll have some objects which are kind of all ready to go really. Let's just find one that we like. Okay, let's use this one. So right click and save your image. Back into Blender, we're going to Shift A, we're going to add an image as planes and we'll click on that image, press S to scale, and let's just move it in front of the light. Just going to grab the spotlight and move it down a little bit more so it's more of an angle, and we'll just move this down a little bit as well. And now it's just a case of kind of scaling it, rotating it, and just getting it so it kind of nicely frames the bottle. So let's duplicate that, move it across a bit, rotate it. And now you can see we can start to have this lovely kind of shadow effect, just, just sort of framing the bottle. And if you actually wanted to animate this, you could also click on the foliage. Um, let's just move the origin point only. Uh, grab Z, grab Y, uh, turn that back off. And now when you rotate this, it kind of sways, you see from the origin point just there. And we could actually just animate that, so as though it's blowing in the breeze. If you're into learning, then you should check out today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is the largest online learning community for creatives, offering thousands of classes across film, illustration, 3D animation, and more. I've been using Skillshare for almost a year now, and the quality of the classes is very high. I'm currently learning Unreal Engine with Geordie Vanderput at the minute, and the class is really fun. Investing in yourself is really important, as it helps to take your career and skills to the next level, allowing you to offer new services to your clients and making you more employable. If you're not sure which class to start with, Skillshare have designed learning paths, which are a selection of hand-picked lessons taken in order so you can work through from basic principles to advanced techniques as your skills improve. Skillshare are offering the first 500 people to use my link below a one month free trial so you can watch as many classes as you like. Now, back to the next lighting tip. Adding movement to your lights adds life to your animation and is a perfect way to showcase the form of your model. Let's see how it can work to show the curves of a sports car. Okay, so here we've got a very simple scene, a plane, a car and a camera. That's what the camera can see. So there's no lights currently on the scene, it's totally black apart from lights from the car. So we're going to start by adding in an area light. So shift A, area, G, Z, let's grab it and move it up. So we're going to scale this light so it's long and thin. So scale on the X to make it thin, S and then Y to scale on the Y axis to make it long. Let's copy to rendered view. We're going to need to increase the brightness. So let's try 500 watts. That looks about right. So what we're going to do, we're actually going to have this light 
pivot around the car to really accentuate the curves and the shape of the car. It's going to look beautiful. Right, so what we're going to do, I'm going to add an empty. The 3D cursor is about in the middle of the scene, so Shift A. I'm going to add a cube empty, just so you can see it nice and easily. Uh, so we're going to select the area light first, and then the cube empty. I'm going to do Control P, and we're going to parent the object with a transform. So now when we rotate the cube, so if I press R and then Y, you'll see the light rotates around the center of the cube. So all we need to do now is pop into camera view. Let's press R and Y to rotate on the Y. So we'll start the light somewhere over here. Add a rotation keyframe, go to frame 100. R and Y, and rotate the light over the car. Press I to add another rotation keyframe. So now you can see we get this wonderful light pivoting across the car. Let's render that and see what that looks like. Building on the last tip, this time we're using an empty to rotate a light. This effect is fantastic for nightclubs, building sites and crime scenes. Okay, so here we've got a fairly simple city scene. We've just got one building and we've got a HDRI just to give it a little bit of ambient light. So what we're going to do, we're going to add in a, an empty first. I use plain axes. And then we'll also add in a spotlight. Press R to rotate, X to rotate 90 degrees on the X axis. And we're going to give this a blue color and increase the wattage to 10,000 watts. Right, let's just have a closer look at that. Uh, and then we're also going to duplicate that spotlight. So press Shift D, press R to rotate Z, then 180 to rotate 180 degrees. And let's change the color of that one to red. And then we're going to parent both of these lights to the empty. So select all three uh, items, making sure the empty has the kind of the bright orange. Then press Control and P, set parent to object and keep transform. Now the empty will control all the lighting so we can grab it and move it around. It'll control both lights for us. So I'm just going to move it up a little bit so it's about the height of a police car. And then we're going to rotate it on the Z axis. So an easy way to animate this actually is to use a driver. So here where we've got the Z rotation in the transform panel, uh, you can actually type in a hashtag frame divided by five and that will basically take the frame number, divide it by five and apply that amount of rotation. So now when we press play, you can see those police lights are rotating round. And if we look in our camera view now, let's just have a look at that. This kind of gives you that instant atmosphere of a police car or some sort of emergency. HDRIs are fantastic for providing overall lighting for a scene. But how do you edit a HDRI to change day to night? Or give a more prominent colour cast to your scene? Here we're going to use the RGB curves node to adjust the colour channels of a HDRI. Okay, so we've got this quite a simple scene here, but it's quite nice. It's a, it's a bookshop um, from Blender Kit, plus a, a little a guy there chatting on his phone. So through the camera it looks a bit like this. It's currently being lit mostly by a HDRI, it's actually this Sunflowers HDRI here. Um, but what if you want to turn the scene from day to night? Well it's quite easy actually, if you just click on the shading tab and we look down here, make sure this is the shader type is set to world and not object. And you can see this is the HDRI and this is currently how it's set up. So from here to kind of turn day to night, there's two things we can do. Firstly, we're going to change the color a bit. So press Shift A and we're going to add an RGB curves node. And we're going to pop that between the outputs of the HDRI and the background. And what we're going to do, we're going to pump up the blue. So click on the B, the B channel and just push that up a bit. And then we're going to take down the green and the red channels in the midtones a little bit. Okay. And then the next thing we're going to do is actually reduce the strength of the, the light that comes from the HDRI. 
until it kind of looks nighttime-ish. And so if we actually zoom out here, you can see just by doing that, we've actually transformed the HDRI from day to night and we've given the whole scene a completely different vibe. Mm -hmm.